All right, so we're going to start with this eye. So this is my nose, this is my ear, so lateral medial. So that would be a left eye, like that. I can tell because of the bone. I can tell because my optic nerve is coming this way. I can tell because my superior oblique would go toward my nose and turn. So if I come back this way, we're going to name the outside stuff. So we have our palpebrae or eyelids in English. And then these corners are called the canthus or commissure. So this one would be the outside or lateral canthus. This would be the medial canthus. The bump, that's the caruncle. The lacrimal gland makes tears, which come down, sweep across, and then enter the punctum, puts it into the canal or canaliculi, into the uh, lacrimal sac, down the nasolacrimal duct, which runs down to my nose. On the inside of my eyelids, this would be the conjunctiva, which is the lining, specifically the palpebral conjunctiva. Then it'd be one, of course this is missing it, it would be one over the cornea, which would be the ocular or bulbar conjunctiva. So one sheet between those. That's that, clear, right? It's yeah, it should okay. be. You can look through it. It's yeah. clear. Then if I <clears throat> zoom in on this eye or this one. So this one, this is medial, this is lateral. So lateral rectus, medial rectus, superior rectus, inferior rectus. And then the obliques. This is inferior oblique, superior oblique. This one's the opposite side, because this is coming to my nose, so this would be lateral, medial, the other way around. Then... I'm so the oblique, on this, that's this, that's this white one, one. So cut not a yeah, red. So okay, up. fine. The red would be actually on your nose. Okay. And it sweeps around the tendon, grabs like that. So... And the same with this, yeah, that this white thing is also an oblique. Right, because okay. the actual muscle is back here. Gotcha. So now where am I? Oh uh, yeah. So now we're gonna start zooming in our layers. So the outer part you touch is the fibrous tunic. The fibrous tunic is made of two things, basically the white, which is sclera, and the clear, which is cornea. That's basically the outer layer. So if I pop those open, depending which model you have, it varies. This model is better than those in this regard. But the next layer in, which they're showing as these, this is the vascular tunic or uva, uvea. On this model, it's the blue layer, because you can actually see it's the next layer in. Then the, the vascular tunic has several parts. The back part, this brown or this purple or this blue, is the choroid, which is the back of the eye. That layer comes forward and then forms this part, which is your iris on the outside or the ciliary bodies and muscles, which are these bumps on the inside. That's all the middle layer, the pupil in the center. On this one, they do it this way, where you can see the yellow. But on this model, they actually show it, this blue becomes these. These are the ciliary muscles processes, which hold onto my lens with the iris. That's part of my middle layer. The orange, in this case, is my sensory tunic or inside layer. I can't get together. Sensory tunic or feeling layer. So on this model, it'd be what's inside this or what's inside this. And that would contain the back, which is my retina, where my wiring is. That would then come forward and form the aura serrata, which is that scalloping edge you see there, or there, or better, here. So that would be my fibrous, vascular, and sensory tunics. Then I'm going to name some cavities. So my lens is the dividing line between the cavities. So if I take this model and turn it, like this, put this back on. So if I look, the lens is my dividing line. So this back here would be the posterior cavity slash segment. Everything from here to cornea would be the anterior segment slash cavity. But then the anterior splits again. If you look carefully, you can really see it here. There's a hole here and one there around my iris. So between the lens of my iris is the posterior chamber of the anterior cavity. Between my iris and my cornea is the anterior chamber of the anterior cavity. And both of these are full of aqueous humor. And then all the back is full of my vitreous humor. Then in the back, I have a few more things. If I spin this one this way, and I look, 
directly in the back center of my eye, right there. That depression is the macula lutea, which is depression. The very center of that, that little dot, represents the fovea centralis. We'll talk more about that in lecture. The thing off to the side, this yellow spot, that's the optic disc or blind spot. That is where your optic nerve enters and leaves, actually leaves the eye. So on these models, that pinkish orange spot, that represents the macula lutea and the fovea. This is the optic nerve and optic disc. On this model, that yellow spot represents the macula lutea and the fovea centralis, and this white spot represents the optic nerve and optic disc. The fovea centralis is inside? Of is the basically the center of the macula okay, lutea, gotcha. basically. So on these models, they're essentially the same spot, mm -hmm. but there's technically a difference. So, so the, other, the other trick to know is that the fovea and macula are always in the center. The optic nerve is off to one side. That'd be your blind spot there. It's just off center. And then let me see. That's it. That's it. It's what about cranial or the nerves? The nerves. So you have to know optic nerve number two. That's the one coming out of the eye. Then you're supposed to know the oculomotor abducens and trochlea, mm -hmm. and they drive different muscles. So if I put this one back together. So the easiest way to do it is learn the two weird ones and then know the oculomotor is the remaining. The oculomotor is the majority of them. So the way I know it is the trochlear nerve runs the superior oblique because that little where it turns at your nose is called the trochlea, meaning pulley. So if I look at this model operated by the trochlear nerve, basically. Oh, okay. Because that one was really hard to visualize. Yes. Then the abducens nerve abducts your eye. Oh. So remember, nice remember way. last term, to abduct is to, to pull, pull away. Mm -hmm. That's the lateral rectus. That's going to abduct my eye, spin my pull eyes pull out. Mm -hmm. Everybody else is oculomotor. So, so, oculomotor is it under that? so basically, if you're not these two, you're oculomotor nerve. So is it like the nerve like within? Like this It'd be back like in muscle. here. Oh, okay. It'd be coming in. So okay. they don't show the nerves on this model other than the optic nerve. Oh, okay. But the way I learned is learn the two exceptions, and then everyone else is on number three. So the not ocular motor does the majority of your eye movement and the majority of the eye wiring, just doesn't do this or this. So it doesn't mm -hmm. move laterally and doesn't move it. Mm -hmm. Kind of cranky. Right. So that's how I remember them, is the ocular motor is the major player. Yeah, but none of these models show the cranial nerves to the eyes. All it shows the optic nerve. Mm -hmm. Right. The cranial nerve, you have to get a brain and stick a brain on it. What's on the back of that? Okay. This is your optic chiasma. So the optic nerve comes in, and that's where number two oh. does that fork. Oh, oh yeah. Just didn't so. show the other half. We'll learn that that's in lecture. Nice that's where the, that. where that, so the other one would be right over here, just like it. It's yeah. even on the drawings and the mm -hmm. diagrams. It's like, what? Yep, the chiasma. Yeah, that's that thing just under your pituitary. Yeah. Or above oh. your pituitary. And that's most of the eye. That's it? That's Thank it. You. Other than, you know.